We went to the craft fair, we came on home. We didn't buy nothing but an ice cream cone. Two Frito pies and a funnel cake, some kettle corn and a plastic snake. There was so much stuff, you know, it took a while to see everything down every aisle. Them artist folks were smiling and waving, I'm just thinking of the money I'm saving. I was 38 when I first sat down at a wheel and started uh, doing pottery. Evidently, my skin is semi-permeable membrane for clay. It just went right into my blood and has stayed there ever since. That was quite a jarring move to just all of a sudden say, well, I'm an artist now. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure I had uh, done what I needed to do to rate that uh, title, but what are you going to do? I mean, <laughs> it can be frustrating, of course, but in general, it's just uh, a very calming and soothing activity. I stand up while I throw. Uh, many potters sit down, but uh, most, in fact, I think sit down. But I stand up, uh, and I think it's a lot better for my back. Quite a ludic activity, sort of like getting lost in reading. It's it's very possible to just get lost in the throwing and time passes and you have no idea where, where the time went. Well, I'm still amazed at what I can do. <laughs> I mean, it's, I know that it amazes people to watch it on film. Something just happened on the wheel with hands and a lump of clay. It's, uh, it's incredible and, and it's very satisfying. Some of my favorite potter's tools I get at the Chinese restaurant. And part of the beauty of it to me is to leave it looking really fresh and not, not worked over. A lot of thrown pottery is so slick and smooth and perfect and all that that it's, it's great to just let some weird things happen and let that be part of the, the beauty of it. Pretty good. Glazes are sort of my playground. I just love to combine them and uh, see what the results are going to be. And really that's the only way you can find out is just by doing testing. And all the effects that you think you have got figured out, you put them in the kiln and fire them and something may happen. <laughs> At some level you just have to sort of accept the zen of the whole thing and take what you get. And I'm pretty loose with my, my glazing uh, techniques. It's just amazing that you can take this same hunk, hunk of mud and give it to ten potters and tell them all to make a bowl and there'll be a wonderful variation in what you get back. I continue to grow and it, in any job if you can continue to grow and that, that'll keep you interested, that'll keep you coming back. He teaches classes, I want to say a few times a week, and these are people who have, I think, been taking classes here for probably years at this point, and the interaction that I've had with them, what I've gotten to know from them, is that they, they look at him probably the same way I do, as this person who's, who basically has the answers to any pottery question you could ever have, and if there's something that I think is impossible to do, he'll be able to figure out how to do it, and I think they come to him the same way. When people buy a piece of pottery, half of what they're buying is the pottery and the other half of what they're buying is the lifestyle of the potter. The kind of story of the potter that goes into making that piece. And there are people who appreciate cheap and there are people who appreciate things that are handmade and individual. If you go to Target and get something one might be green and one might be blue, but they're going to be exactly the same otherwise, and, and that's uh, something that's, that's lost by that kind of mechanical reproduction that produces those kind of items. Some people report to me that they like to just feel that little PL that I stick on things, that little 
texture that's there, you know, they'll drink out of it and just feel that little texture where my initials are. And uh, some potters uh, put the stamp so that everything sort of goes into the clay and I've decided to put a little ball of clay on and make it stick out a little bit. Just the very act of handling it and washing it and making it part of everyday life, uh, that's, uh, that's just part of who I am, I guess, that wanting people to interact with it in that way, which is why I'd prefer they do that than just put it in a holder on the shelf and have it decorate the back of the counter or something. I, I tell people when they buy this stuff, this is going to last for 3,000 years, unless you break it. It'll be around in 3,000 years, so you know, that's, that's my guarantee. If you don't mess it up, it'll, <laughs> it'll outlive you. Down in Blanchard Springs where the fiddles ring and the bullfrogs do si do On the buffalo where time goes slow, you can paddle your own canoe when we get away for a month or a day You know we'll always find Down in Arkansas It's God's own law to have a natural state of mind Natural state of mind Natural state of mind